I have never traveled alone. Honestly, because I don't trust myself to not let everything go wrong. To overcome my fear, I decided to go on my first ever solo trip to Edinburgh. The city of hidden bookshops, cafes and old buildings, and of all my gothic dreams. This is how it went. Hello, my name is Naomi and I am quite stressed right now. Oh God, what have I done? <laughs> I've never traveled alone. It honestly really scares me. Because of that, I felt like I should do it. And also, it just seems really fun. I love seeing people travel alone. I love the idea of just being able to choose your own itinerary, being able to take it as slow or as busy as you want to. So that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Yeah, I'm very scared of a lot of things. I'm afraid that my alarm clock's just not gonna go off. And I'm gonna miss my train. I'm afraid I'm just gonna forget my passport, lose my passport, or just forget anything really important. <sighs> I'll see you tomorrow morning, super, super early. So on day one, my first fear immediately became a reality and that is that my train to the Eurostar that I had to catch was delayed, meaning that I would arrive about half an hour later than planned. Luckily my anxious self had accounted for this, so I still arrived on time to catch the train to London. And so my nine hour train trip had begun. For years, I've had this odd recurring dream. In the dream, I step on the train alone and travel to a foreign European city. The city is always a surrealistic mashup of Vienna, Warsaw, Prague and Amsterdam, filled with Baroque coffee houses, Gothic church towers, celestial decor and somehow also the Chinese terracotta army. It's absurd in a way only a dream can be. I exclusively dream arriving in this city entering the stream of people outside the train station and seeing the hazy pastel colors of the buildings emerging in the distance. I never dream actually being in the city. I know it's a cliche when you're on holiday to say, oh, it feels like I'm dreaming. It's just like a dream. But when I arrived in Edinburgh and I entered the stream of people in the train station and saw the old Gothic buildings emerge in front of me, I felt like I was dreaming. I felt like I had just set foot in some foggy corner of my consciousness. Except this time, I didn't just arrive, I could also actually explore the city. Hello, I'm here. I survived the train ride, eight hours of it. I'm very tired, but it's four in the afternoon. So I guess I'm just gonna go outside and explore the city a little bit. My room in this hotel, although it's really, really noisy, I can hear all of the traffic going by. I do have a view on, I think it's, I don't know if it's Arthur's seat, but some kind of very cool Wuthering Heights looking hill. Getting my first view of Edinburgh at night was actually quite the perfect first impression. Edinburgh is known for its dark alleyways and even darker histories about ghosts and murderers and vampires, so being introduced to this in the cold winter evening was actually quite perfect. One of my fears this holiday was going out to dinner alone. 
this first evening I was feeling way too socially awkward to go to a crowded pub for a bite so I found something a little bit more quiet a few streets away from the hustle and bustle of the Royal Mile honestly the vibes in this pub were on point and very homey and with all these beautiful candles and I had this amazing vegan burger that was so good that I genuinely feared for a second I was eating real meat but I wasn't Yesterday evening, I just walked through Old Town and I, I think I actually saw all of it in just under an hour Except it, it was dark, so I do want to go back. So this morning, I just really slept in <laughs> I went to bed quite early yesterday and just needed to get my rest um, and now I think I'm just gonna Grab a coffee and some brunch somewhere and read one of the reasons I came here was to just read in the cute little cafes and I think today I'm just going to explore the new part of town. I like to just kind of explore cities and just walk through them before I start actually planning and doing specific things. <sighs> I think I'm also going to book one of those city tours with a guide because usually that's a place where other people uh, that are alone on a trip show up. Maybe I can find someone to talk to. But this is going to be my first full day alone and I'm not really sure how it's gonna go. I'm afraid I'm going to get bored somehow or tired of constantly having to ask for a table for one. Um, but I think my plan is to just every time I'm somewhere I can just whip out that book and then suddenly I'm just like an artsy girl that's reading alone in a cafe instead of someone that's uh, looks kind of lost looking around while they're sitting alone One of the reasons I chose to Edinburgh is because I already speak English. It's actually not my native language, I learned it. And because I speak English, I know I will be able to connect more with the Scottish people. I actually met some of you guys there and it was so wonderful to be able to talk to you guys about books and life. One of the happiest days on my trip was the day that I got to talk with some of you guys. When I think about my next solo trip, I've always wanted to go to Paris, but I know being there and talking to people just wouldn't be the same if I don't speak French. So I've been taking a French course with the sponsor of today's video, Lingoda. I like Lingoda's online classes because they have such a strong focus on the speaking portion. Uh, où mange-t-il ce soir? Oui. Actually speaking the language that you're learning is crucial if you want to use it to be able to connect with people. Lingoda offers English, French, German and Spanish with native speakers as their teachers. They have classes available 24 seven, which makes it super easy for me to fit a class into my schedule. I think their coolest feature is the language sprint challenge in which you try to follow 30 classes in 30 days or 60 classes in 60 days. Practicing a language every day and building that habit is the fastest way to progress. And if you succeed, you get a 50% cash back and free language classes. Join the Lingoda Language Sprint and experience the joy of connecting with people globally. Click the link in my description or use the code Buglio to get an additional 20 euros off. But I'm not in Paris yet, so let's focus back on Edinburgh. And 
then I decided to check out some of Edinburgh's many wonderful bookstores. I started out with Waterstones because there was a specific book that I was looking for, a specific gothic book that I felt fit the Edinburgh vibes and I thought it would have the best chance of finding this book in a big bookstore like Waterstones. Unfortunately, uh, they only had the sequel. Then I went to Topping and Company, a bookstore that looks exactly the way I want my future home library to look like, labyrinth-like, and with ladders everywhere. Again, I didn't find the book I was looking for here, and also I almost didn't find the way out. Seriously, this bookshop is a maze. So this evening I joined a walking tour all about Edinburgh's history with ghosts and murderers and grave diggers and I didn't uh, want to film any of that. I was kind of hoping to strike up a conversation with someone but I turned out to be the only solo traveler in the group surrounded by all couples and it is difficult to get between couples and strike up a conversation so my socially anxious heart didn't succeed at socializing today. My fingers are so swollen from the cold that I can't get my rings off. <laughs> like, there's absolutely no movement in these. Well, I guess that's the end for my fingers. Um, great, another ghost story. So it is like dinner time right now. I just came back from a guided tour around the city at night. I didn't film any of that. It was really great, but now it's like, nine in the evening and it's just a really awkward time to go to a restaurant and i just want to say you know getting breakfast alone absolutely no problem going for lunch alone also absolutely no problem i do that all the time also back in the netherlands if i'm not on a holiday but getting dinner alone i don't know what it is but it's just a million times more awkward i find it so difficult to find a good spot to have dinner, especially when you're alone. I don't really feel, I don't really, there's a lot of pubs here and I just, I don't know, there's something about just walking into a really crowded pub and just sitting there to eat while I'm alone and there's like all these people around you that are talking to each other that I just find very awkward. And it's also not really late, so it's just a really awkward time to go <laughs> eat anything. So I went to the Sainsbury's next to my hotel and I got some vegan sushi <laughs> and the smoothie <laughs> that I am now going to eat <laughs> in my hotel room alone and hope my fingers don't fall off. You know what? I've decided that I'm just going to make some tea because of course this hotel has a tiny little kettle as the good British hotel that it is. And I think I'll just turn this into an eating sushi and watching a movie evening. <laughs> My goal is to go to a pub tomorrow and just sit in a bar. I found one that had, that looked really cute, that had live music, but they didn't serve any food. So maybe I'll go there tomorrow, overcome my fears and go to a pub tomorrow. Th that that's my goal. So remember that book I couldn't find in bookstores? Yeah, I just bought the ebook. <laughs> anyway, plan for today was to climb Arthur's seat. 
Arthur's Seat is the tip of a big hill right next to the city, named after King Arthur. I don't know why I thought this would be an easy climb. I am from Holland, the flattest country you can think of. I never walk even the faintest of hills. Of course I struggled with this one, but it was still amazing. I loved it. This is one of those things I miss from where I'm from. Being able to go on hikes, seeing actual wild nature, the fact that there is a whole windswept park with pale green hills right next to a city is bizarre to me. The best thing I can find from my home area is some human-made forest. But here I can go for a 20 minute walk from the city center and end up on rugged rock and almost let the wind throw me up the hillside. I love it. That evening, I stuck to my promise to myself and went to a pub. Day three was the day I looked at a lot of beautiful things. Beautiful houses, beautiful old bookstores, beautiful art. This is also the day where things started going a little bit wrong, by the way. So, let's go. I started off this day going to Dean Village. It is a part of Edinburgh that's a little bit more outside of the city center and it's a little bit of a less touristy but still very, very beautiful part of the city. I kind of felt like I stepped into the past a little bit when I went here. There were barely any other people around in this part of town to the point that sometimes I really wondered if I had accidentally walked into someone's private backyard. But it was honestly nice to walk through everything alone. I was still feeling a little bit sad about the fact that I wasn't able to talk to anyone yet. I hadn't really struck up a conversation with anyone. Not at the walking tour, not when I went to a pub because I just wasn't able to muster up the courage or know what to say to a stranger. And maybe because of that, it just felt really nice to do an activity that felt like you needed to be alone to do. With all that walking, I started to slowly feel a little bit of an ache in my left knee, um, but I decided to just hopefully walk it off. Thank you. 
I made a small detour so I could visit this bookshop called The Gently Mad that is also a binary. Spaces like this that are filled with old secondhand books and posters and reused little scraps of paper is basically what I want my future home to look like. At this point my knee really really hurt so I was really happy to find another very cute coffee shop to wind down for a bit. Throughout the day, it just got worse and worse. Like, you can see here that I'm having trouble getting up these stairs. And it got so bad that in the evening, I decided to just have dinner at the hotel restaurant because I couldn't get myself to walk anywhere else. <laughs> Hi, back at the hotel. I just washed my hair and I'm, I bought a sheet face mask and boots have a little night in it was originally my plan to have one night in but i am now also kind of forced to oh gosh oh i forgot how weird and slimy these things are oh cold oh god that's cold oh shit that's cold hello welcome to serial killer hour Woo. get ready with me killing someone <laughs> so um this morning while i was walking around i kind of started feeling a little bit of pain in my knee and i was like well you know i just gotta walk it off i guess and you know if i just kept walking it kind of went away almost but throughout the day it did kind of progressively get worse my knee hurt so much that it actually made me nauseous <laughs> So uh, I ate at the hotel restaurant today. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I've probably just overburdened it, which honestly, what am I, a grandmother? I'm 26 years old and I've overburdened my knee because I'm walking through a city. What's going on? <laughs> so yeah, I hope I can walk again tomorrow because tomorrow is my last day and I kind of really want to enjoy it. I don't even mind that I had to eat in the hotel restaurant today. I think the most difficult thing about traveling alone so far is just eating out alone in the evening. There's always like a really nice coffee shop or lunch place that you can find wherever you go here in Edinburgh. And I don't mind at all. I actually really love sitting alone at a coffee shop and having my little tea and a little pastry and then reading on my e-reader. It's honestly, oh, I love it. And the great thing about traveling alone is that you really can use those lunch hours to kind of recharge. In the evening, it's just different it's just not the same vibe i don't know what it is and i think also one thing i learned from traveling alone is that there is really no shame in just spending evenings inside of your hotel or your hostel or whatever you're staying if that's what you want like i went to the pub yesterday and it was really nice i didn't talk to anyone that's like one bridge too far honestly i'm just too awkward to do that like i'm fine if someone speaks to me making that first move and just starting to talk to someone i don't even know how to navigate that like i'm too shy to do that but it was just nice to sit there and listen to the folk music um yeah so uh that's the update <laughs> great night in The knee still hurts, but a lot less. 
I'm gonna take it slow today. to leave the city. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> I feel like I've just arrived and I'm already leaving. It's really extraordinary how things that feel so outside of your realm of possibilities, things that feel so dreamlike, can become so normal so quickly. Before I went on this trip, like I said, I was very anxious. I felt like I was doing something that was almost impossible. And now taking the train back home just felt like almost like second nature like i didn't even think twice about it i was just like well i'm just hopping on the train going back home as if i've done this a million times before i think when i went on this solo trip even though i was kind of scared i was hoping that on the trip i would find out that things really wouldn't go as wrong as i thought they would the opposite kind of turned out to happen i mean my train did get delayed i didn't really talk to strangers as much as i thought i would be able to i hurt my knee <laughs> causing me to barely be able to walk during the last day like i can't say that this trip went without any problems but that actually was even better because what i learned on this trip was not that nothing will go wrong i learned that yeah things probably will go wrong and you'll be fine anyway you'll be able to solve the problems and i think that was the lesson that i needed wow look at me i'm like learning lessons and stuff <laughs> also i cut my hair yes Wow, I go on one solo trip and immediately I'm like, I need to cut my hair. I'm a new person now. <laughs> I want to end this video with just a few more little reflections on the solo traveling. I don't want to say I'm going to give like tips because I feel like I am not enough of an expert on solo travel to give tips, but I can imagine a lot of you guys have questions. So I just, I'm going to give a little bit more reflections. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering if I felt safe even at night and I'm gonna say that I really did. I stayed at the city center in a hotel at the city center so there were always people around and I will say I didn't really stay out past 10 I think at any moment but before 10 in the dark I did feel quite safe here. Second thing, I do believe that it massively helped me that I knew the language, even though honestly I couldn't always perfectly understand what the Scottish people were saying because 
English is still my second language. Sorry, I love the Scottish accent. So I do think if you're afraid of language barriers, going to a place where you can at least speak the language a little bit really, really helps or take the time and effort to learn a little bit of the language. For example, by using the sponsor of today's video, Lingoda. Link is still in the description. I think it's really good to keep in mind that if you solo travel, the whole point is that you can do whatever you want on that holiday and if you don't want to like go out every evening that is okay i think next time i go on a solo travel i'm definitely gonna maybe try to find a hotel that has a bath so i can just plan a night in where i get like a bath bomb and a little face mask and just sit in the bath in the evening have a little spa night you can do what you want, it's your holiday. And lastly, I will admit that I did get a little bit lonely in those last two days, I think. I'm very introverted, I love being by myself, but even I still at some point was like, I kind of wish I could go somewhere with someone else and share the experience. I'm definitely still working on the fact that I'm just really shy and don't really know how to talk to strangers because I would love to be able to do that and have the confidence to do that. I do want to mention here, because I didn't really film this in this vlog, I did organize a little meetup with some of you guys in the city center, which I love everyone that was there. If you're watching this video, I loved meeting every single one of you. And that was honestly like such a wonderful experience and did really make me feel a little less lonely while I was there. And lastly, lastly, I fully become addicted to sitting in little coffee shops and reading my little ebook <laughs> it's amazing oh my god <laughs> i can just do that on weekends in my own city why don't i do that more often amazing new hobby unlocked reading in coffee shops i know completely groundbreaking no one has ever thought of this ever before i am unique and original <laughs> i am filming a video all about using my new e-reader and comparing it to like reading a physical book so if you have any like e-reader questions leave them in the comments i want to end this video by thanking all of my patrons for supporting me with a special shout out to all of my elite hidden library members whose names you can see here and a warm welcome to our newest elite members okay ashley twilit squid Komel and Rebecca Knox. Welcome. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another video very soon. Goodbye.